be live? Yeah, let's go. Hey, you know, listen, a little delay sometimes across the country. Don't mean to make a fool of myself there, but it is January 12th, 2022. I notice I keep signing everything 2021. Jason, what about you? How many, how many times have you signed 2021 so far? Uh, no, I haven't actually. Well, I have. I got, uh, we got Skyla in the studio audience. What's up, Skyla? Hello. I'm happy to even talk to you since it's been barely any time at all. It's a little chaotic. I'm yeah, not going to lie I know. about that. Um, obviously, Joe, Crypto Joe's in there. Joe, I bet you're happy to see Bitcoin getting back to 44,000. It's like right on the cusp, right? Yeah, I'm super happy, especially since resistance at 45. I think we're going to beat it. Yeah, you know, it, it is a little nerve wracking when you've spent, uh, what, $160 million on miners, $167 million on miners and installation and stuff like that. It gets a little scary. Jason, uh, but you were never worried, Jason, huh? Uh, well, I can't really say I wasn't I wasn't worried because but I do know this. We uh, we made a good acquisition at a fair market price. Let's just say that. Hey, Jason, you notice my screenshot. That's a uh, that's an F4 four uh, fifty eight. We'll talk about that later. Uh, who else is in the in the house here? Do we have Brett on camera or not? Is Brett able to be on camera? I'm not on camera, but you can, can hear, hear me. Voice, oh, well, we though. can hear you for sure. Yep. Hey, uh, hey, let's get right at it, Jason. Uh, market's a little better today. Can we just go through the numbers real quick? Yeah, we're going to talk about the market. Uh, we're going to get into some details about uh, what I talked about Monday with the dollar and silver and gold. I know uh, Andrew Mills in the chat, he'll like that discussion. Anyhow, the uh, the Dow was actually finished up today, uh, 36,291 plus 39. The NASDAQ was 15,188 plus 35, and the S&P was up 13 points, 47.26. Bitcoin on the cusp of 44,000 here, right now 43,955. Ethereum 33.88. Oil was up big today, uh, up 1.8%, up $1.48 a barrel to 82.70. Enjoy that $6 plus gas in California, I feel bad for you. Um, <laughs> Gold dollars a barrel? 8270. Going to a hundred in my opinion. Um wow. hey, gold was up today. It's 1827. Silver was up really big. 41 cents in a silver move is a big move. $23.25. Copper was up large as well. Uh really up 13 cents. That's a big move. Four dollars fifty-six cents. You're seeing commodities, inflation numbers came out today. Seven percent CPI. The highest in 40 years. It's not going to stop. Remember when they said it was transitory, Todd? Yeah, I don't know where that word came from, transitory. Um, I've never heard of inflation being transitory. Jason, when's the last time you remember the dollar strengthening and inflation going down and your dollar have more in purchasing power? I don't know. Do you ever remember that? I do not. Uh, I was very young during Jimmy Carter's tenure. I would venture a guess that it probably did that a little bit into Reagan's administration. Maybe. If I, if I travel to Venezuela, I can buy more with my dollar today than I could yesterday if I wanted to live in Venezuela. But here in New York City, uh, bagel prices are going up. And I would know this because I've eaten a bagel every day since I've been in New York City. Yeah, the bagels there, it's all about the water, right? It's all about the water, for sure. I, uh, I, I had someone on Twitter suggest that because I have haters, I should maybe ease up. I was thinking to myself, in the 32 years that I've had haters being on Wall Street, trading, being a shareholder activist, I don't know that the haters have ever been right other than if something went down and they got the claim it went down. Now, that would make me right on AMC because I shorted some AMC, of course, covered since then. It's now lower, but I don't hear the haters in AMC coming back and saying, Todd, you know, you were right from $44, it's now 22 uh, or GameStop at 100, it's now 125. The haters are only right uh, like a broken clock once a day, once a year, et cetera. But I try to coach up my friend on, on Twitter not to worry about the haters. But I wonder how many haters they have in the oil patch when oil is $82. Uh, I thought EV was taking over and you didn't need any oil. Jason, what's the problem here? Hey, dude, what happened when the futures contracts for uh, light sweet crude were negative and barrels were $20? I mean, now they're 82.50. dollars 
That's no, no, they went negative for a day. I know they were below. Yeah. You, had, you got paid to get rid. You had to pay to get rid of your oil. Yeah, that is true. Now we're. Uh, yeah, what happened to? Um, you know, petroleum-based products are used in everyday life all over the world. I don't know what they were thinking there, but anyhow, with it's the important. It's important to me that all my haters know, and all the people that like the show, to go like and follow us on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. It's okay to be a subscriber. Uh, you never know what will happen. You might get invited to uh, to see a show or something like that. Hey, Jason, I want to point out that Brecky Von Von Bitcoin interview is is up and I believe live right now. Um, am I playing this out of sequence? I might be playing out of, out of sequence, but uh, Nick or Brett, is it okay if we run the Nicky Von the, Bre the Brecky Von Bitcoin uh, promo? Yep, here we go right now. Oh, this is the conference promo. That's nice. Oh, there he is, Charles. Hey, that was exciting. Obviously, it's exciting to uh, learn about the conference. It's going to happen on May 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th at uh, the Paris Hotel. Uh, you can join us, obviously. Go to tellout.com. You can check it out. Hey, Joe, I, I take it you'll be there um, teaching everyone about Bitcoin? Yeah, I'll be there teaching everybody about Bitcoin for sure. Super Joe, what's happening with you? What's happening with you? Did you actually get COVID? I heard that you were not feeling well. <laughs> no, my how, how's things my wife actually got my wife actually interestingly enough got um the flu we were tested multiple times and no covid positive so really just a case of i it, it exists apparently still apparently you're still allowed to get the flu can you get the common cold too a little sniffles or i is think that like so five? i think you can get yeah, the okay. flu still i, I gotta okay. ask both you and jason a question todd did you see uh that bill miller came out and said 50% of his entire portfolio is in Bitcoin now? Yes, billionaire Bill Miller. Did see that. If people understood how smart Bill Miller is and how much money I have made listening to Bill Miller, I, I did not know that. And while I'm I'm incredibly grateful you told me, um, Bill Miller had made me a, a lot of money in Amazon. He is a great value investor. He's a great identifier of undervalued assets. I'm a big admirer of Bill Miller, uh, and I would love, love, love to see that. I did not know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and wow, he also came uh, out on record on a TV show apparently and said that he truly believes that everybody should have at least a one percent of their entire portfolio in Bitcoin. Wow, Joe, like you're like a reporter now. I never knew this. <laughs> what this happened? This just this, this just came out. I mean, like literally this morning. So pretty, pretty excited about that, that someone that's that savvy and that so many people trust is now actually prompting them to diverse for their, d diversify their portfolio directly into Bitcoin. Hey, can we, can we uh, make this available for our audience to show the links? Can we make this available to Christy, our producer, and talk about making these available, please? This would be, this is incredible. Bill Miller is an incredibly smart man. And I, I really am learning this for the first time because I have in New York working on a transaction. I get up in the morning at 8 a.m. and I work on it till four or five at night. Today, we cut out early, we cut out around three. But I've been working on it pretty much nonstop for, for days. And uh, uh, I'm interested to see that link. Can we make that available to Christy and make sure we can put it up on the show when the show uh, yeah, is reposted? Yeah, I'm going to pop it up in the chat too right now. 
I have hey, the uh, Jason, for you. Jason, were you aware that Bill Miller said this? Yeah, I did. I did see that. I, um, you know, one of the news aggregators, uh, crypto, uh, crypto news aggregators had broadcasted that, I think Monday and, uh, or maybe Tuesday. That's, that was big news. That's incredible news. Wow. I'm almost uh, blown away by that. Wow. Jason, what else are you covering right now? What else is interesting to you? I saw that Naked Brands, which is now called Centro, uh -huh. does, doesn't appear to be trading that well. No, I think it's uh, 0 0.208, so uh, almost 21 cents pre-reverse split. And uh, yeah, it hasn't been trading very well at all. Uh, just looking at the symbol now, uh, closed at 307, up after hours, $3.10 pretty light volume for them, 10 million shares. Um, I was more looking at uh, gold silver plays and oil plays today. Uh, AUMN, uh, HUSA, uh, ticker symbols that were I was looking at also FRD and US Steel came out with a new facility they're gonna be building in um, Osceola, Arkansas. It's near their, um, one of their big plants the big river plant there, it's not too far. It'll be a combined 6.3 million tons. It'll be a mega mill. It looks like it'll be about 3 billion costs to build. It'll be finished in 2024. U.S. Steel did get an upgrade by a couple of, um, I think Jeffries gave them an upgrade, uh, trading at around 25.70, 52-week high, $30.57. I like U.S. Steel. I'm not recommending it, but that's a nice, solid cash-flowing company for sure. Friedman had a move too today, Todd. I saw Friedman move. We are the largest shareholder that I'm aware of of Friedman FRD. Uh, and that was a very helpful for us. I, I see that Niall, minimal comments here, uh, <laughs> it continues to trade at uh, below book value, below the value of our miners, below, I mean, I don't know what to say here. Uh, thank God for buybacks. Thank God for uh, being able to buy it when I'm allowed to buy it. At this point, I, I, I probably have beaten my head in the ground about it. It almost seems like I'd be better off to not make any comments about any companies we own and just focus on the market and uh, answer questions once a quarter. I don't know, Jason, what do you think? A little Buffett style, we answer questions once a year, once a quarter, not really common. Because I looked at Riot, it's down from $79 to 21 It's down a, a big whopping, I think, 75% from its high or something. And uh, apparently, uh, we're not a Bitcoin miner. I don't know. I mean, we, we our our our, big, our our price is uh, below what we paid for the miners. I mean, it's below the deposit we made on the miners. I believe. Yeah, the, there's only really one crypto ticker, quote unquote crypto ticker. Of course, the algos don't recognize Nile as a crypto ticker uh, based on the price action. Uh, it seems like we get all the downside and none of the upside. But let me talk about the only crypto ticker. Actually, there's two. BTCS, which actually reversed hard around January 5th. They announced a buyback, $500,000 in Bitcoin, five, uh, five cents uh, per share in a form of a Bitcoin dividend if approved. That stock actually is now $6.70. The only other bit crypto ticker that has done well, to my knowledge, is N NXTD, more of a uh, software and tech play in crypto and the payment processor space. Other than that, you're right. All the crypto tickers have uh, have not fared very well. I noticed Canon had a good day today, but they're beaten down. SOS beaten down. Mara, Riot, like you said, they're all just succumbed to the small cap uh, um, you know, misery that was been happening in the last 45 to 60 days. Yeah, I, uh, so Brad, I hope we're ready with Brecky One Bitcoin, but I, next week there's going to be a show with Brecky One Bitcoin, who's in the Bitcoin space. He was on my podcast. Can we run that promo, Brad? There you go. What All are right. your thoughts Time around for... Michael Saylor's? He has become like a legendary in, in, in his commentary. <laughs> you know, in terms of bringing Bitcoin to the mainstream and making it palatable for uh, people in the corporate world and, you know, he, he set off this latest bull run, bull run. I don't think anyone can kind of, you know, dispute that. That's what started it. That's what's, that's what brought us to where we are. That was quick. Are we ready to go? And we're back, huh? Five. 
this this delay thing drives me crazy. I'm sorry to everybody. Hey, uh, Skyla, you know, obviously it's that time of the day here. Uh, we need a break. We uh, the monotony of Bitcoin conversation and, and and others. What's what's going on with you? You got uh, something you're going to tell us today? You got a funny joke for us? I do have a joke. It's so a dad joke. So, um, how did the octopus beat the shark in a fight? No idea. He was well armed. Oh <laughs> my goodness. That's great. That was a great dad joke. Thank you. Oh my God. Are the you best ones. Get, are you getting in front you're gonna get in front of three thousand people live on 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 screen and a couple hundred people in person and tell that joke at the conference? Trust me, I'm trying to think of the very best possible jokes I can tell at the conference because I was thinking about that. Oh yeah, there's gonna be tons of people actually there. I have to tell some really good jokes. So <laughs> Yeah. So, Jason, I wanted, I, I wanted to talk to you about the actual overall small cap market. I've been looking at some of the numbers and some of the small caps like a Nile have been pretty annihilated. What do you what do you make of it when you look at it, giving yourself a real honest assessment? What are you thinking about what's happened to the market? I looked at things like naked. That thing has been, been clipped pretty hard. But when I read the filings for naked, obviously, there's a lot of stock that was issued. And I, I, it's going to take some time for that to settle in. But I wondered to hear your thoughts on the small cap universe. Why why you think it's getting hit so hard? I mean, everything is down in the small cap, like 50 to 75 percent, some some even higher. I, you saw a lot of profit taking tax sales for the end of the year, money rotation more into value plays, uh, free cash flow plays, uh, also stuff in commodities. I think it's just a lot of just money rotation that went into large caps. Uh, although the tech stocks did sell off pretty hard too. I mean, Twitter's down, uh, what, over 50% from its high. Um, speaking of um, social media tech stock, DWAC, DWAC, reversal on the daily uh, looks really good. I'm not recommending the stock, but Truth Social is going to be launching in February. I think you're going to see a big run up again in DWAC to test all time highs. It's just my opinion. Keep an eye on that. It's trading very heavily. They announced Devin Nunes left, left Congress. It's going to be the CEO of True Social. They're doing a deal with Rumble. Rumble's gaining all kinds of popularity. Um, it's kind of been a, more of a old school type of free speech platform. I watched an interview with the Rumble CEO on uh, Tim Pool's uh, YouTube channel, Timcast. A uh, very sharp guy. He looks like a young guy, but very sharp. So keep an eye on DWAC. Uh, again, not recommending the stock, but it looks really healthy on the daily. I saw DWAC moving uh, this morning. Um, so when's the merger going to be complete? All that's going to be done. Well, it has to be done by, I think it has to be done by February 1st. Uh, they plan on launching around Valentine's Day, according to what I'm seeing here. So... Nothing yet after hours, but I would expect news after hours here within the next seven to 10 business days. You would uh, assume that'll be a competitor. I mean, how much is, is it really a threat to Facebook in your opinion? I think it's gonna be more of a threat to Twitter, in my opinion. More, okay, yeah. okay got it. So yeah. is, the, is the thought process here, the people that kind of love Trump, Trump nation, yeah. go over there and then they make, you know, they give it a run basically? Big tech's about to be splintered into a million pieces. Rumble is going to take market share, in my opinion. Truth Social is going to be hosting free speech, uh, libertarians, conservatives, center right leaning people, uh, classical liberals who you know, a lot of people might not be sure what a classical liberal is. I'll let you do the research on that. Uh, but, some more of these, like a, but some of these, Jason, some of these apps, I think there was one uh, a year and some change ago that when they let them run completely free, you know, there is some truth. I know that. Uh, Joe Rogan has recently talked about one that he's on now. They tend to get a little crazy, don't they? I mean, how do you mitigate the craziness of like neo-Nazis and kind of crazy stuff on there? Because there is an obligation for the platform to to not let people go crazy and make it a crazy site, right? Or what, what's the scenario? Well, yeah, they are publicly traded companies. Rumble's going public via SPAC also. Um, but you'll have terms of service. Uh, they reviewed the terms of service on Rumble yesterday on the uh, program. Yeah, they're not going to tolerate any kind of uh, violence or uh, you know uh, r racial stuff or anything like that. Uh, but you know, ch any kind of pornography, all that stuff. It's just not going to be. And in my opinion, the reason why they're doing this is because they 
uh, had a problem with uh, basically a political um, situations where, you know, it was perceived that one side of the aisle was censored more than the other side of the aisle. So I think that's what Trump is doing here. He's launching this platform. Who knows if he's going to run again in 24, but at least they will have a format where they think they can be treated fairly and they can voice their opinions and they're not being censored because uh, someone thinks that someone thinks that a certain medicine is a good treatment for COVID. And it turns out that it's actually is a good treatment for COVID, but they censored that person um, even, even after the fact that it was proven. So just crazy stuff like that. You know, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw Joe Rogan talking about how he was bashed pretty hard for taking something prescribed to him by a doctor. I can, yeah. see, how that, I can see how that can be a little frustrating to people. And um, CNN, did you see what CNN did to him? They like miscolored his face. They like, they, they put up, they made him look like he had like malaria or something. I don't know. It's really crazy, but CNN actually their, their ratings are down 90% from 2021. I mean, they're just, let's totally... go to Joe. I, I know Joe is a big CNN watcher. <laughs> Joe, uh, are you going to start doing the crypto report for CNN directly? You know what? That would be, that would be fabulous, but I don't think they're going to let me on. I mean, the biggest part about not letting me on is, well, I'm not even going to go there, but I, I have I, I have the same issues with Jason with that network. What I would say to you, Todd, and your question to Jason is, <laughs> is hate speech is still hate speech, so they'll have something against that, right? What happened with Twitter, yeah. Facebook, and all that is they turned some anything political that didn't agree with their viewpoint became hate speech, became bullying, became, you know... Mm -hmm. I mean, there are still standards that are that are actually alive that say... You know, hate speech isn't acceptable on on almost any network, and what constitutes hate speech is very well is very well defined. Yeah, <clears throat> and it hey, used Joe, to be I defined for to, Twitter and them. Joe, I wanted to go uh, and, and take a little bit of shift here to Kazakhstan, and can we talk about the Bitcoin network, the total hash weight rate, and what's happening there, Joe? Do you do you? I know Jason has some information here. But where do we stand on what's happening with Kazakhstan? Well, we're definitely seeing the fallout now from it, right? I mean, we went up another tick, 0.5 on uh, the difficulty. And, and we're only shortly into the new, new set of two weeks of difficulty inlay. But if things keep up, our, our, the global hash rate went up to 190 exahash, but it actually came down from 200, and I believe it was 35 or 25 at its peak. Um, and we're going to see that because it looks right now the block the block length is at about 11 minutes and 13 seconds. So we're going to drop in difficulty by almost 10 percent. So the last two yeah. difficulty jumps are going to basically be wiped out if we stay as is. But but what's happening there in terms of the government? No, Jason, what do we look like? There's there's the news coming out of there, man. Yeah. Well, the the narrative on uh, mainstream media was the Kazakhstan people were very uh, irritated and pissed off because of the raise in energy prices. However, some of my sources are saying that the reason they rioted in the streets and were and there was bloodshed everywhere was because the government of Kazakhstan told the people that if they didn't get jabbed, they couldn't access their bank accounts. Now, that's just what I'm hearing. I can't. I'm not going to validate that, but I've heard that from several sources. Well, you have a you have some boots on the ground. I know that when we were looking at areas to mine before Michigan, we looked at Kazakhstan, and of course, I almost threw up with the idea of of, of that idea of spending a hundred million dollars, and then hundred in this case, we spent one hundred and sixty seven million, and that we would ship resources overseas. And you know, I obviously I couldn't get comfortable with that, but you do have some direct connections there. Are, are they back up in mining again, Joe? Do we know whether? The country's fully mining again, or is that just not the case? We don't know if they're fully mining because, like Jason reported last week, I think it was, we do know that there were roving bands of, you know, ministry officials over there knocking out plants that were mining. So do I think that, that miners are mining? Yeah, I don't think their power is off anymore, and their Internet is definitely on. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a giant raise in the last, let's call it, couple days. I mean, not giant, but... A lot of the hash rate that went off is coming back on, right? Yeah, that's the indication that they're mining hey, Jason, again. Jason, anything you want to cover before we call it a day? Um, hey, I wanted to see what's that background you got there, Todd? 
<laughs> oh, Jason. Is that is that is that your favorite car or something? I, I'm just trying. I know you like Ferraris, but that is it. Well, I named my son one of my sons Enzo. That's an F four fifty eight. Uh, more on that later. That is a, a spider, actually. Joe, do you have anything you want to cover before we move on? <laughs> I mean, I want to cover the car like Jason wants to cover the car. <laughs> hey, Skyla, anything on your end? Um, did you guys hear about that cliff that fell in Brazil? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was that. insane. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Pretty bad. I think a bunch of... How many people died? I, I know you're smiling, Skyla. Tell us someone... What? I think I'm not smiling, but I think 11 and then some are still not found, which obviously are dead. But I just thought that was absolutely crazy. I don't know if you guys saw the video is. I don't know. Yeah, that was really a, bad. I, I did yeah. see the video. Yeah, very, very negative. Very, very negative for sure. Hey, yeah. hey, keep an eye. Keep an eye on the dollar. Uh, keep an eye on the dollar. My thesis was a uh, triple bottom back to 89 on the weekly. It said close to it was 96 on Monday. It's, it was 94, 96 on the DXY. And keep an eye on gold and silver, the actual physical spot prices. And keep an eye on the actual premiums if you're trying to buy gold and silver. Go to findbullionprices.com. I'm not being compensated. That's just a live meta site. That's just my recommendation for, for to get information if you're considering buying physical gold and silver. Hey, Jason. Hey, real quick, yeah, go ahead. since you're big on gold and silver, you think you can get copper to come down in price? Because I need a lot of it, and I don't want to pay know. the prices. Hey, there's copper in that building. <laughs> hey, go to go to uh, to go to go to toddalt.com if you want to pre-register for the conference. Hey, uh, with Brett, can we can we run the uh, the promo one more time and then count me in and then we'll give uh, everyone some information. And we'll call it a day. Hey, Jason, Jason, what's your favorite part of that video? I know what mine is. What's your favorite part of that video, Jason? Well, I'm a huge Charles Payne fan, so I just I'm looking forward to actually meeting him. So that's that's mine. When you landed him, I was I was really stoked about that. Yeah, he will be one of the keynote speakers. But one of the things that I was excited about was that on the stage in Dubai with Bitmain and Frank, well, that was a great day. Obviously, that that really launched us into mining in a big way where we bought 20,600 miners. I'm pretty excited about it. Joe, do you feel like your luxury life, your sort of like cushy life in Vegas, where you didn't have to do much, has now been upside down by that trip to Dubai? I know that you were there and you had to, we had to order all those miners. Are you a little busier now than say your cushy life of going home at four o'clock every day? Wow. 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 Holy shit. I mean, I suppose it's the same cushy rife as a, uh, as arriving at noon every day. So you know, there you go. Hey, don't <laughs> worry, Joe, because I'm up every day at six a.m. with the market. Me too, I baby. Some... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, thanks. Thanks, everybody, so much. Thanks, Christy. Obviously, our new producer. We're getting used to this. I will be live in studio back on Monday. Uh, on Friday, there will not be a show. Unfortunately, I will be busy, and there's no way I can make that show. Uh, it's not going to be possible until we, till we do it later. I will talk to the team and see if they want to do the show later, like 3 o'clock. If there is, we'll put it out of community. Go to toddalt.com and click on the text message there, and you can get updates as to when the show is going to be live. Go and pre-register at toddalt.com for the conference, May 12th through the 15th. There's going to be a lot of special guests. I like sailing. There could be things like that happening there. Joe, is there any guests you want to see at the conference that may be there? I don't know. I like sailing too, man. I got to tell you. For sure. 
Yeah. Hey, uh, hey Jake, what, two more things. Tomorrow is the ex dividend date for Friedman. So if you want to participate in the two cent share dividend, you'll need to own that stock uh, by tomorrow. Also, Todd, your exit, you, I think we need something like uh, uh, a saying or expression as you exit the show each day. And I, I think I came up with one. So give me the exit. What is it? I think I think it's probably go Bitcoin and mine baby mine or something like that. We'll have to come up with it. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time. Go Bitcoin, mine baby mine. Everyone take care. <laughs> We're gonna try to see you Friday at three o'clock would be the time frame. Three o'clock specific time. Let's uh, we'll let everyone know the show's going live then. I should be ready to go by then. Everyone, we'll see you Friday. Take care, everyone.